Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Brother Brand Ambassador Angela Wolf here, and Emily Thompson is joining. We've got a super cute project. I'll give you a hint. How many times do you have your laptop or maybe even your tablet and you want a cute little container for it? Well, she's got one for you and you're going to love this. So welcome everyone. Say hi. Uh, it is officially, some of us call Fat Tuesday. <laughs> I, um, I'll have to ask Emily about this one, but all I want is a big fat donut. I know they're called something very special and there might be a little baby in there, <laughs> but all my friends in New Orleans, uh, I love it when you send me these little snacks. And by the time today's done, it will be Fat Tuesday. So Emily, how are you? I'm good. So glad to be here today and so excited to be sewing this project with you. And I know nothing about Fat Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I got to I really, I had no idea uh, about all, I mean, I, I knew about a lot of the traditions, but not all yes. of them. And many years ago, I was down visiting uh, All Brands, a brother dealer, Yes. And did this little tour during this entire week, and everybody was giving me the best gifts. I had beads, I had beautiful <laughs> scarves, but then the king cake came out. Oh, and nice! <laughs> I don't like sweets, but this is like a awesome. It's like an awesome powdered donut. I mean, it was to die for. Yes. And so I only took a few bites, and I just kind of put it to the side. And I don't know if Kelly's watching; he'll be laughing. And everybody's like didn't you eat the dessert? Where's the dessert? And I said, you know, I was embarrassed because I only had a couple yeah. bites. I was trying to yes. be slight. And they're like, you have to eat the whole thing. I'm like, oh my gosh, are you kidding? So I did. Yeah. And it was delicious, but there was a baby in there, like a little plastic baby. So <laughs> I feel like I've seen those, but never experienced the full dessert part of that. Oh, yes. so. It's delicious. And that meant that next time I need to bring the king cake, but I haven't okay. been back yet. So I'm still working on it. Take your it. <laughs> Take your it. All right. I see all of you rolling in. I see many of you, by the way, are in New Orleans. So I hope you're having a good time watching a lot of the parades. I've been checking that yes. out. So Emily, we're not really talking about parades today. You're talking about a super yes. fun project, but if you're traveling, it would be fantastic. That's right. This is an awesome project for traveling and it works for nearly any electronic device that you have. You can sew it for your laptop, for your reader, for your tablet, like really you could use this and because you're just sewing off dimensions and make this for anything that you need to take with you. And I have um, smashed things before because I don't <laughs> properly protect them. So this would be um, great and I probably need to make more in multiple sizes and I do have more of the fabric so maybe I could make myself like a matching travel set but um, I have like um, I don't know it's kind of a rip stop um, vinyl on the outside so that is really cute and then on the inside I oh it's really it's tight I actually put some flannel because one that's what I had on hand when I was sewing this and two it's really soft and I thought oh that might be nice for my device now um, green is what I had. I probably would choose like a pink or something if I was purchasing fabric for this project. Um, but the flannel inside it makes a really nice soft touch. And then you just have some hook and loop here for closure. But you could put a button or snaps or really anything that you wanted um, here on the edge. And it actually sticks out past your device. So you can get hold a little bit too. And the device stops before this closure. So let's talk about um, sizing so you're going to want to measure your device and just let me get you give you a couple of tips for that as you're thinking about measuring so if you have a laptop or a tablet that's a little bit fatter um, you're going to want to make sure that you take that height into consideration because if you only measure length and width and then say double it right length and width and then we have that two panels it will need it needs to be fatter or the device cannot fit inside so not only do we need to add a seam allowance but I would add um, probably a half inch on either side for the height of your device unless it's like an e-reader that is super thin um, then you might not really have to okay but so make sure you just add some extra on both of those sides as you're taking that into account so my fabric is cut nine and a half wide 
by 14 and a half long. And my actual device is only eight wide. So I've added an inch and a half for seam allowance and the uh, thickness. And then my device is 12 inches long. And so I've added a couple inches for that closure and for the seam allowance where we close up the design, okay? So you're gonna want to cut um, an outer fabric and an inner fabric the same. Instead of cutting two pieces, I actually just double the length, and so the bottom will have a fold, and that's really easy too. But you can go ahead and cut two individual pieces if you would rather do that. And then the part that makes this project, or that makes this actually protective, is the padding. So I have some fusible foam, and fusible means that this side actually has um, like an iron-on substance on it, and we're gonna fuse it to the felt. You can buy um, double-sided fusible, and if you wanna do that too, then um, you could put it all together, fuse it to the lining, put it all together, and then iron it one more time on the outside to fuse the outer as well. But as you can see on this, there's it lays really nice and flat, and there isn't really a reason to fuse it to the outside. This isn't like wrinkled or rumpled or seeming to need um, any more attachment. But you can definitely buy foam that is fusible both sides, not just one side. Okay, so let's start with that, and then we'll sew this up. It's actually a really easy sewing project, but I do have some tips to help you be successful with this, and of course, mistakes that I've learned along the way. So you're gonna take the back side, so you can see this, the back side of your um, lining fabric, and the flannel is, there's not really a wrong side, so we're, we don't have to worry about that. But what, what we do wanna do, is go ahead and center the foam on this. Oh, so the foam is cut um, an inch and a half um, smaller in width to account for that seam allowance and to make sure we can turn it. And then um, on the length, it's cut about um, three inches. So we want to center it in our lining, on our lining. Actually, I'm gonna just get rid of this pad for a second so I can totally see. <laughs> hey, Emily, while you're getting that rolling, I just want everyone to know we we are really live. Someone said, are we really live? Yes, so well, keep your questions rolling in and yes. we'll take little breaks to answer them. So yes, just keep them rolling. I, I'm really here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay, great, thank you. Okay, so you can see that I have um, on both sides and some extra fabric. Okay, and then on both sides of the, the side, I have extra fabric, okay? So I'm trying just, you wanna really center your foam. It is smaller on purpose because one, we don't wanna sew the foam in the seam because that makes it really unmanageable, especially when we're trying to turn it right side out. Um, and then when I put that hook and loop or whatever you choose for your closure, that part is not padded on the, um, trying to think did I pat it I don't think so you could pat it or not pat it I guess you could make make your your padding go really all the way to the edge um, besides the seam allowance or you can make it where it's it's a little bit shorter and then your button or whatever you put doesn't have to go through the foam so you can sort of think about that or play around with it so now what I want to do is actually want to flip it over so that I can um, press it on the fabric side and not press it on the foam side so with it centered and the good thing about flannel is it's a little bit sticky, so everything kind of stays in place. I'm gonna press this part and then move it over because I'm not using my full ironing board, but you're just going to, with your high heat or whatever your fusible foam gives you um, for directions, you're just gonna press this in place and it fuses really nicely to the flannel, plus smooths out the flannel. My piece was a little bit wrinkly and we want to make sure that it's attached really well so we're just going to give it a couple seconds in all these places and then we'll move it and do the other half so this would if anybody has any questions this is a great time for me to take those but 
Um, I am so glad you guys are here watching this, and I hope you can think of a device that needs a little case. Hey, Emily, there are a few questions for okay. you. So the outside fabric that you're using, could you just give a little more description of that? They were just curious to know, is it a certain kind? Can they use anything? I mean, really, they could use anything, yes. but anything. it's a vinyl? Yeah, it's um, so... It's something that I bought in a fabric market. So it's one of those that was on an unmarked roll at some point. <laughs> so let me just show you. The back is like a plasticky vinyl that's white. And then the front looks like a rip stop. It has those, you know, check marks in it running through it. Um, and, but it's pretty thin and pliable. So you could definitely make this with a thicker vinyl or pleather. Um, but I would probably give myself a wider seam allowance if I was working with one of those th thicker fabrics. So this is really pretty, but yes, I am not exactly sure what it is, but it is a plasticky fabric. <laughs> so that helps. And by the way, all of you that have one of the machines that have my design center, or maybe you can add yep. fills, this would be a super cute, I can't say the brand because it's not brother, but you've seen those bags that are quilted that are yep. really expensive. This would yep. be a very cute one for that too. Yes. Um, okay, so here is the foam used to the backside of the lining. And again, I wasn't too worried about which was the backside or the front side because on the, the flannel, it doesn't really matter. But at this point, what we're going to do is fold it in half with the right side together, making sure that you are lining up the top, right? So we want that to be nice and even. And we're going to do the same thing with the um, lining fabric as we do with the outer fabric. And that is to sew up the sides. I'm going to put a few pins on the lining and i'll show you this when i get to it we are going to leave an opening in the side to turn it okay so that we can um, turn this right side out after we've put the two pieces together but i'm just going to put some clips in here okay so this is held together and then i can go ahead and sew that one and i'm going to get this one ready too so that it's all set and we will do the same thing. And I am going to, I'll show you, use my um, non-slip vinyl foot for sewing this piece because the back is super sticky and like I said, kind of plasticky. Um, many, many years, well, six years ago, um, we lived in Hong Kong and when we left, I went to the fabric market and I shopped and I bought like two huge boxes of fabric that I shipped back with us. And this is still one of those that I'm using. So I really don't have any idea what it is because it just came off a random bolt. Um, but sometimes I think like from factories in China that make bags there, we get, we would get some of the fabric. So it's really pretty um, fabric to use. All right, Angela, I'm going to switch my camera over and. All right. Sounds Here good while go. you're switching. You just give me thumbs up on your back, but I saw some of you saying, can you add a front zippered compartment or anything like that so you can actually um, add room for the cord and the mouse? I was thinking the same thing, and yes, that would be a great thing to do. I know that we have tutorials on the Brother blog showing you how to add a little zippered compartment to the front, but maybe Emma will have to do a part two one of these days. This will be on the Brother blog too, don't forget. So this whole project will be on there, but of course you could always mash it with um, another project, which would be to add a zipper case. And of course, doing all of that, you would wanna add more room um, so that you don't you know, run out of, your device actually still fits in there when it's done. <laughs> okay, I think, I Angela, gotcha. I'm ready, yes, okay. So here we go, and I'm gonna sew the lining first without the vinyl foot, but I do just wanna show you. So this is the Brother, see if it focuses on that, not on me, non-slip um, vinyl foot, which is great for sewing any, it's just slippery on the bottom. And I love it for sewing any difficult fabric. So not just vinyl, um, but really anything that gives you trouble or is a little bit sticky, it is really super for sewing that. And I'm just gonna use, 
Uh, probably the edge of my presser foot. Um, so about a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And again, I'm keeping the top lined up and then sewing along the side and just gonna use a regular straight stitch. So very basic actual stitching needed for this project. I'm gonna top stitch or back stitch so that it's nice and secure. We will be doing some aggressive turning when we put this all together and then turn it right side out. So I just wanna make sure that it is sewn really well and um, holds together. Okay. So one side of the lining. Now on the second side, I do want to make sure that I leave a hole for turning. So I'm going to sew um, part way down and then I'm going to go ahead and backstitch and leave about a six inch opening. Okay, depending on your foam placement and you might be able to see here, the foam is actually under the presser foot. Um, because on this side it got, I didn't measure. So it got slightly closer to the edge of the fabric. Still plenty of room for me to sew without sewing on the foam, but you might have to get your presser foot out um, or up on there just to maintain the seam allowance. Um, but you can also just try to shove it and sew right next to it too. So whatever works for you, I'm back stitching right there. Then we're gonna take this off. I'm gonna move down. So I have a nice space to turn it. I don't wanna be fighting through too small of a hole, although I feel like I almost always leave too small of a hole. I never, never am generous enough with myself on leaving that. So right here, you can see is a turning hole. It's probably four inches. I probably should have left it a little bit bigger because we'll have to bring this whole thing through it, um, but we'll manage. All right, so then the second step is I am going to take off the foot and put this nice little slippery vinyl foot on, which will help feed it through. You can also use a walking foot or something like that when using difficult fabrics. Those are all very helpful to keep the fabric moving and not, hopefully not get too stuck. So the same with this one, I'm going to back stitch at the top of each side. And then sew down. And depending on what fabric you use, you may not need anything special. This would work with quilting cotton or really any fabric. It's very versatile and super simple actually in its construction. So you are just wanting a fabric that is going to look nice and maybe hold up depending on what you're doing with it. If you're traveling and it's gonna be getting a lot of use, make sure you know you have something that can withstand that. But nothing special really needed. Hey, Emily, just a, a quick question while you're yeah. sewing. Yeah. Um, someone over on YouTube wants to know what machine are you using? What brother machine is that? Oh, this is the 5200, my favorite. The 5200, all right. Yeah. And it's a combo sewing and embroidery machine, so you actually could add some embroidery to this fabric before you started sewing up. Um, you know, lots of embellishment options for sure. I have done on a um, laptop case before that I sewed, rather than making a zipper pocket on the outside, I actually just made um, like a like an open pocket, right? So you could just slide everything in and that was really easy too because you can add, if you can add little darts at the bottom of that or pleats and then it makes that pocket have some height just stick fat things in like a mouse or cords. Um, that makes it a little bit easier. And then it's on top of the laptop. It's not going inside this cover. So um, you could think about that, but you could also add pleats to a zipper pocket too, just to give it some height and be able to stick those fat things in there and not, not squish your whatever is in your device that's in here. All right. So what we're going to do now is put these two right sides together. And I want to leave um this lining on the outside because this is our turning hole and i want to be able to access that so i'm going to turn this right side out and if you want to clip the corners you can do that that'll make them look a little bit nicer when this is finished 
but um, with the padding, this doesn't have super sharp corners to begin with. So I'm not as worried about that, but it's always never a bad idea to clip those corners. So I'm gonna turn this like this and stick it inside. And I don't really need to get this fully turned out yet because we're gonna be turning it again. So this is just to stick it inside and make sure that the right side of the lining and the right side of the bag are touching, which they, they are, okay? So right side of bag, right side of lining, this is the wrong side, and so the right sides are touching, and we're gonna sew around the top of the bag at this point so that we have a nice um, edge. And then we left that hole to turn it, so we can go ahead and use that as the turning um, knot along the top. So I do wanna flatten out my top edge and then what I like to do is start by pinning or clipping at the side seams. And I'm just going to flip those seam allowances open, okay, so that you eliminate some of that bulk on those side seams. Make sure the seams are lined up and then flipping the, flipping the, the um, seam allowance and then putting a couple extra clips here so that we can sew around the top of that bag, okay? So really easy, we're just gonna zip around there. Obviously the smaller your device, the smaller this opening, so you might have to go a little bit slow. I'm gonna leave my vinyl foot on because actually I'm gonna sew it like this, which I'm still stitching on that plasticky vinyl fabric, okay? And then the same seam allowance, I'm using the edge of my foot, which is, um, just about a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And I'm gonna stitch nice and slow so I keep those two fabrics lined up. Just running a little bit into the wall behind me. Okay, and you're just gonna go right around. Keep the clips out of the way. I moved it, it didn't like it. Okay, so yeah, I'm just keeping those clips out of the way. Make sure you're taking a good chunk of fabric. There's no reason to have a super narrow seam allowance here on the top. And we do wanna make sure we're grabbing both the vinyl and the flannel so that that top around it is nice and securely sewn. Once we turn it right side out, you can always top stitch or add other stitching to help reinforce that, but just slowly making our way around the bag and you can kind of see I'm turning with my left hand to keep it, the fabric sort of laid out and rotating. All right, so back around to the top and I used a um, navy thread so you can see it along that edge there okay and then on the inside there's the vinyl that's grabbed right there okay so now we take the turning hole that we created earlier and we left for this reason and we're going to pull the bag back through itself so we want to turn the whole thing right side out and again this is where the bigger the hole you leave the easier this is but then the more you have to sew up later so this is always where take a look at emily's nails beforehand and then take a look after that's always like the nail cruncher there goes the nail polish how many nails do you lose in this process yes i know these are getting old too so i'm sure they could easily i could easily lose one here all right now before we sew up any of the holes i am going to actually reach my hand inside here and this is my last chance to sort of poke out these corners okay so now is the time that i'm going to you can use um something besides your finger if you want but i'm just going to get it the best i can with my finger but whatever you like to do, again, they're not as sharp as some corners anyway because of the um, padding, but 
they poke out pretty nice along there. And then we don't really need to do this because this is going back inside this part. But what we do want to do before I do that is to stitch up this opening. So hopefully you've left, left yourself a decent seam allowance and you're going to fold it back inside. And that's why we do this in the lining so that we don't see it anywhere. It just gets stuck back inside and no one really sees it. So um, I think I can still just use this vinyl foot, but I'm just going to stitch really close to the edge. You could hand stitch it. You could change, of course, to exact matching thread. All of those will help it to be seen even less. But again, this is going to be on the inside of my bag. So I'm not really worried about that. I'm just going to stitch. This one is a really close, like an eighth inch to the edge. Make sure I'm back stitching on both sides. Okay, so now I've closed up that opening and we'll go ahead and clip the threads. Okay, and now we take it and we can put it back inside the bag to finish or at least finish the first part, okay? So again, a little maneuvering. And you may notice, depending on how thoroughly you fused your foam, that in a couple places, it's not quite as secure to the fabric as it was. That always seems to happen when I'm shoving it through the turning hole or something like that. So what I will do when um, I'm all finished here is run the iron over it again. Of course, this time I'm ironing on the vinyl, so you want to make sure that you probably lower the heat so that you're not um, melting your project, which would be super sad at this point. And then I'm just reaching my hand inside. The foam doesn't always want to lay super nice in there the first time. So just getting that arranged, making sure if it's pushed down too far inside, then it won't lay nice because it's too long in there. So you actually have to maybe pull it back up a little bit. Can't really show you what's going on inside here, but I can feel it. And then once it's nice and flat, then we can go on to the next step. And you can kind of see how nice and flat it is, but from the outside as well. There's no bumps, there's no like big wrinkles. Okay, Whew. it's flattened out. So then I'm going to pull up this edge and I'm actually going to put some clips along here to hold this nice and flat and these two layers are exactly where I want them to be before we put on the hook and loop but um, like I said this would be a really easy to add another closure if you wanted something else right there okay so now we can top stitch along there and we can also add the hook and loop. So I have cut a four inch piece and you could do two smaller pieces, one large piece, totally up to you. But we're going to top stitch around and as I top stitch around, I'm going to catch one edge of this in that top stitching and then I'll go back and sew the inner edge. So the outer edge will be caught in the top stitching and the inner edge will be um, done separate. So I want to put this in the center of the bag or the pouch. I don't know, you know what to call this. Is it a bag? Kind of a bag. Okay. And then obviously on the other side, you can use the first piece as your guide and line up the placement just like that. Okay, so I'm using navy thread. So when I top stitch, it won't really show on the outside of the bag, but we will see it on the inside of the bag. So now we're going to once again, so pretty close to the edge, maybe a fourth inch this time. And we're gonna sew all the way around. And this time we will be catching one side of that hook and loop on the project to attach it and then we'll go and attach the other side so that it's not floppy, it's actually secure 
and can do its job of keeping the bag closed and whatever device you have in here, keep it nice and safe. Okay, so again, rotating using my left arm, my left hand to help rotate the bag. The more sort of level it all stays, the better it seems to sew. Going around the side seams is a little bit trickier. It just seems to lay a little bit less flat, need a little more maneuvering. But then once I get back on the sort of flat straightaway, it's quite easy to sew. Coming back around to where we started. I told Angela I'd really love to show you my computer in this adorable bag. However, my camera and about five <laughs> things are plugged into it right now. And uh, there's no way with all those cords sticking out of it that it will slide into here. I have to unplug everything, of course, to slide. We'll just take it. We'll take everybody watching, Emily, just fold them all up and stick them in the bag. Yes. You'll just <laughs> have to imagine that it goes together. All right. So now we've got this sewn on one side, and we're just going to run a stitch along that back side. So, again, probably a thread that coordinates with your front, this outer fabric. Of course, you could have, you know, different on the bobbin and the top so that they both coordinate. If you didn't want to see any thread, you can see the navy stitching there. And then again, like I said, I'm not, I don't have padding in this part of the sleeve, but if you did want your padding to extend all the way out where your closure is, then you would just probably want to leave that three quarters inch like you did on the side for the seam allowance and not the like couple inches that we didn't have foam on ours. So you could have it padded all the way to the top if you wanted. All right. Clip some of those threads there. Okay, so then you simply close it up. Well, first you put your device in. Then you close it up and you're all set and ready to go. But, I mean, really, we can think about probably so many variations. Handles, zippers, excuse me, zippers, pockets right? All the things that you could add to it. This is just a basic idea with the padded foam to get you thinking about what could you add to this to make it exactly what you need. You know, Emily, I love, well, a few people are like, I love how you teach because it's so easy to follow. I totally agree. And you know, that padded foam, you made it look so simple to sew. And when people see that in a store, I know it can be intimidating. Like, yeah. is my sewing machine going to sew through it? Right. Is this going to be an issue? How easy? Is and you didn't even, you know, when you flipped it inside out, it really wasn't that big of a deal. No. No. And I, for something like this, I don't catch it in the seam. And I think that just makes it really that much simpler. We don't have to trim the seam allowance. We didn't have, like, big, fat pieces of foam in our way. And so... For a project like this is a great starter project for foam because I didn't even sew it. I literally just ironed it on and then now it's inside the bag and it can't go anywhere. So even if, you know, the fusing starts to come off, it's it can't go. It's like stuck. So it really is secure um, even without being stitched into those seams. That's perfect. Everybody's saying so cute, easy to do. Yay. All right. So I, as you know, the brother crowd always... I see somebody's going to add embroidery. We've got handles going in. We've got pockets going in. So Absolutely. I have a suggestion. When you work on this, make sure that you use hashtag brother sews and hashtag brother crafts because they will That's love right. to see this. Yeah, Such absolutely. a fun project. I would love you if you tag me too. Like, And I know Angela has those tags on the, um, the ticker for you, but then I can see what you're making too. And I am always checking out the brother sews tags as well, but um yeah it's super i would i'm always amazed at what you guys come up with and just the embellishments that are so easy to add um if you want to add something more to this basic idea super super easy uh, so by the way if you're watching on facebook and you want to watch this again share this to your page yes. that's the easiest way to find it be sure to like it though because then yeah. brother will know you like the shows and if yes. you're on youtube subscribe to the channel 
and also give us a like. We would love that. And um, if you have other ideas for shows. Uh, oh, and that's a good idea. I missed it. But um, did you sew in hook and loop tape? No, I think you just mentioned it. Yeah, I, um, I sewed it in. Oh, you did sew it in. Yep. So we, we sewed in the um, outer side when we top stitched around. And then I just went back and stitched in the bottom of it as well. So this is the my closure of choice because it's so easy. Um, but really, buttons would look cute or snaps. You could make a flap that comes over, right? This is just such a basic template that you can go crazy <laughs> with. <laughs> so I'm laughing because I was like, no, I don't think you. Yes, you did. That took like three seconds. You yeah. just included it in the whole thing. Yeah. So I was with the wind. <laughs> you probably and I was and missed it. It was quick. I know. <laughs> That's what I get for sipping my tea. <laughs> All right, everyone. You can keep your questions rolling in because uh, Brother Social always comes back and checks these out. I have the websites below. You can see them scrolling, brothersos.com. You want to go check out. There's some new things on the blog. This will yes. be on there soon. Not quite yet, but it will be there soon. We always like to give right. you a little preview of what's coming. Yeah. And uh, I have Emily's website there, Life So Savory, and mine, AngelaWolf.com. We always love to hear from you, brother. We love that you let us take over your page. And uh, Emily, in the meantime, anything new and exciting you're working on? We should be going to your YouTube to watch. What I know. What are you I'm um, working on a new bathing suit pattern for boys. Mm -hmm. um, my boys could use some new swimsuits, and my my oldest especially really loves the kind of suits that have the built-in sort of compression shorts and aren't like the little mesh briefs that is probably more common. Although I think the the shorts underneath are getting more common. So anyway, I'm trying to um, put something like that together, and I'm just in the very beginning stages. It's all up here, but that's what's on the rest of my plate for today. And of course, there's always new posts, one to new, one to two new posts on my site every week with lots of fun ideas. So come check it out, say hi, and then of course, show off what you're working on. Perfect. I agree. I'll be over there to see. I can't wait to see these bathing suit shorts. I've got a lot of neat nephews. Well, I've been working on a bathing suit, um, little tankinis for Ooh. girls. So we might have to get together and show off our yes. seats. <laughs> oh my goodness, I would love that. Rose actually just the other day said, I need a new bathing suit. I can't breathe, it's too tight. <laughs> her little like bathing suit top, it is not that bad. But of course it's it's tight around her ribs right now because it's from last <laughs> summer. So I said, it's, you can breathe, you're fine. But um, <laughs> it's time, it's time to start thinking about with spring break coming up and summer just around the corner to start thinking about bathing suits, which I love to sew and make. So super fun. It's gonna be so fun. Well, Emily, this was a great project. You all watching, don't forget to go check out the blog once it's on there, but there are other projects in the meantime. And yes. Emily, I can't wait to see what you work on next month. Sounds good, thank you. See you next time. All right, bye everyone.